Hey guys, welcome back to some more Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross. In today's video, we're going to be going through a sort of fast progression guide. I've played a lot of accounts on JP up to chapter six, clearing chapter six, to try and work out like the early part of the game, how is going to be the fastest way to progress into that sort of end game grindy phase of it. So we're going to go through, through things like and this is completely free to play. The, the order of the heroes that you want to upgrade, um, the, each town and what you want to buy and get out of each town, the features you unlock along the way and which ones you want to do, how you want to tackle them and stuff like that. And then also a little bit into gear and sort of just basically making your main sets of gear and stuff like that. Uh, timestamps will be in the description, so let's get into the video. I will be uploading this very close to the launch of the game, so if you're around at that time, uh, link to my Twitch will be in the description if you want to come hang out. The first thing I want to look at is going to be the reroll. Basically, this is going to take two seconds, maybe a little bit longer. But Green Meliodas, reroll for him. He's a one in five chance on your first 10 pool in the game. He's going to make things a lot easier. I've got a reroll guide. I'll link it in the description if you want to check that out. Um, but yeah, it's really easy to reroll takes about six to eight minutes per reroll. Hopefully it doesn't take you too many to get that one in five chance to get him because he really helps out towards the end of chapter five and into chapter six. The next thing we're gonna look at is the heroes that you get free to play and the order you're gonna to wanna to upgrade them. Basically for SR heroes, you're gonna have this red bond that you get through campaign on chapter two and this green Meliodas that you actually start with. Bond is going to be the first one you want to upgrade to UR, Maliotis the second one. Basically at the end of chapter 5 there will be a quest where you have to get both of these guys to UR level 60. So by the end of chapter 5 when you have to get both these guys to UR level 60, you'll only have, if you're progressing fast, the SR pendants to get two heroes to UR. So that's why you want to focus on these two. Even if you have some really nice URs like the um, the Red Elizabeth and Hawk or, um, or the Gustav or something like that, leave them for later. Get these two done first you'll get more sr pendants as you go past that and then you can upgrade your other sr heroes so bond first because he's going to be the one you use more he's just absolutely fantastic for boss stages as free to play so that's the reason for him and the meliotis well he's not really that great because you're going to be running the green meliotis hopefully and he can just he's just he's just getting upgraded because he has to it's pretty much what it is when we move into ssr heroes what i did was i did the blue deanne first to ur now there's two ways you can go about this I did the blue SS, uh, the blue Deanne to, to UR first, and then by the time I really needed the green Meliodas, which was in chapter six, I had enough to get him up there. Now, you can choose whichever way you want to go. The reason I did the Deanne is because um, when I was playing this account, I was at, I was working, I was sleeping, so I was farming a lot. So the Deanne was really nice for farming. If you're grinding really hard and you're playing the game actively, you might want to do the um, the Green Meliodas first because he's going to help with that campaign push and stuff like that. Um, the second one you want to do is going to be the King. So you choose either Deanne or Meliodas, and this is free to play once more, free to play. Uh, you choose the Deanne or the Green Meliodas first. And whichever one you choose, don't worry about it. The second one I do is King, because King is fantastic everywhere. Um, even in early farming teams, just because his ultimate's an AOE, he's got the recovery. He's just he's just really good. And in boss fights, he's got the Petrify. Once again, he's got the recovery, which is really needed in a lot of fights. Um, but even against boss fights where they're immune to CC, King is still going to be great. So King, number two. And then number three for SSRs, you're going to want to do either the... Not let it go to sleep. You're going to want to do the opposite one of the the Deanne or the Meliodas that you made. Pretty much it. That's that's the that's the opening order. Just doing those ones should pretty much be able to get you almost to the end of chapter six. Um, but if you have to do other um, SRs or if you've pulled SSRs, um, some things that I'd recommend, I did the green Elizabeth and Hawk here. I'd recommend the red Elizabeth and Hawk if you do manage to pull her, because she's going to be fantastic for the red demon. Uh, maybe the green uh, Gustav, who's going to have, we'll just go have a look at him. This guy here, he's basically got a freeze on his second skill that activates at level one. So he's fantastic for the red demon as well. So something like that, start building characters that are going to help you progress further. And they're basically just going to be the stat sticks that attach to your other heroes. So that is it for the order. 
Next up, we're gonna take a look at the chapters and what you wanna get out of each chapter. So chapter one, we'll go through chapter one in a bit more depth. Uh, you're gonna just keep clicking the yellow quest symbol at the top right there, progress through the quest line. Now, the thing about chapter one is you're gonna actually complete the quest line for chapter one and move into chapter two with only a one heart on this like friendship with the town. What you wanna do if you do get into chapter two, you're gonna to wanna to come back to chapter one. Uh, you can look at the map here. You can find some of these blue quest marks. Go do a couple of blue quests. It will get you to uh, friendship level two with the town. And then you're gonna to wanna to click this gear merchant in the left hand side. It'll make you auto path to the gear merchant. Now, once you do that, you're gonna open up the dialogue with this guy. Now, you're gonna to go to level one. Now, yes, we're buying level one gear, but you require level two to actually unlock him. So that's why it happens like that. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is buy, buy about three set, three, three copies of each of these pieces of common gear. Now, I know attack sets are only for four piece, but at this stage of the game, it's all you're gonna have. So just put six pieces on your four main heroes that you're using, which is gonna be hopefully your green Meliodas, your Elizabeth and Hawk, uh, you probably your red Deanne by now, and then like whoever else you pulled, it doesn't matter. Um, just to help you build up your combat power, just cruise through the campaign. And the, the reason we're gonna buy common gear, I'll touch on it quickly. Basically, common gear is a lot cheaper to buy, a lot cheaper to upgrade, and a lot cheaper to re-roll your stats for, because you can re-roll the substats once you unlock them. And basically the substats that you get, um, the percentage, so say attack percent on a substat, is gonna be 3% on common gear as max. On SSR gear, it's gonna be 3% as max. So yes, SSR gear is gonna be better later on, but because it's so cheap to upgrade common gear, um, you're gonna to wanna to do that. You're gonna to wanna to upgrade some of these common sets. Um, but what you really wanna do is when you buy these, is you're gonna to wanna to focus on the one set of common gear, the right hand side mainly, um, upgrading them because then you can swap that gear around your heroes depending on who is the strongest um, element in the fight. So basically, buy three sets of these, chuck them on everyone, you're not going to worry about upgrading. We'll talk a bit more about gear a little bit later on. So you're gonna buy those, and then you're gonna jump over into the shop once you clear the chapter. Because in this shop here, um, down the bottom here, you're gonna click this one, and every chapter that you clear, you're gonna get a free set of gear. Now, this one, this is like chapter five, so this has got um, SR gear. Chapter one's like rare gear, chapter two has a couple of SR pieces, I think. I can't remember, but you're gonna get free sets of gear. Grab them, equip them on people, happy days. Now we're going to move on to chapter two. Chapter two is going to be very similar to chapter one. You want to get to level two friendship with the town. This is going to give you defense sets of gear. You're going to buy probably three copies of each of them. Basically use them to split up your sets so that you've got four pieces of attack gear, two pieces of defense. Um, once again, you complete this chapter, you're going to get a free set of gear from the shop. Go get that. That's pretty much all there is to this chapter. Then we're going to jump over into chapter three. And chapter three is going to be very similar. Um, this one has HP gear. I'd probably go buy one or two sets of HP gear because uh, you'll be, end up putting it on a couple of heroes. Uh, I, like having, I like having one decent set of HP gear, one decent set of attack gear so that I can put the attack gear on the whoever's got the elemental advantage, whoever's going to be doing the most damage in the fight. And then the HP gear on whoever I'm just trying to get to live in the fight. So that's, that's basically why I change the gear around when I do it. But the other thing about this town is that once you get to level two, you unlock some nice foods in the merchant. Now you're not gonna go, you're not gonna want to go crazy buying these foods because they are quite expensive. But when you unlock level two, run over to the merchant, which is gonna be the top one over here. And now that we finally got there, we click level two here, and you're gonna see these top three foods. Now these are combat power foods. They increase the power of your team in combat. Um, it doesn't give them like stats and stuff. It just basically boosts the power because whoever has the most power has the first turn. So these I'd probably. Five, like spend 50,000 gold on these by five. We'll, we'll get into cooking a bit later on, but for now, I'm just gonna, like I just buy five of these. It helps you with break points. So at the end of chapter five, the boss is really hard. If you can use one of these to boost your power and just get through that one battle, um, it's gonna send you into like a quest chain, which is really easy and gives some really good rewards. So it's kind of those break points you'd wanna push past. So I'd buy five of these, keep them in your bags um, and use them on key fights that you really need to. Um, but yeah, don't go, don't go crazy buying these because they are very expensive and gold is very scarce, but it's just nice to have a few of these in your back pocket if you need them in some fights. 
into chapter four and there's not too much. You, you, now you've got your attack sets, your defense sets and your HP sets. The, basically the raw percentage stats from those sets provides much more combat power than the other sets. And that's why you're gonna wanna go for them early game because combat power through campaign is a very important thing to look at. Um, so yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna stick with those. So in this chapter, you're not really gonna buy anything. Um, you're just gonna cruise through this chapter, keep moving on into chapter five. And then when, once we get to chapter five, this is where the campaign starts to get hard. So this is where you might have to go back and start farming, which we'll talk about a bit about the SP dungeon and stuff in a minute. But this is where you might have to go farm, upgrade your team and get them a bit stronger. Hopefully try and push through this chapter. And then chapter six is where it really slows down. You can actually get to chapter five, clear pretty much chapter five in about a day if you're going really hard, maybe a little bit over a day. Then you're gonna be looking at chapter six and this is where you're really gonna to have to stall, grind hard. These ones, you're not gonna be buying anything from the shop, um, nothing really that struck me as something you needed to buy. But once again, through all those chapters, make sure you're collecting those free gear sets from the shop, um, and then you're gonna get it into chapter six, and this is where it's gonna get hard. So now we're gonna look at the features of chapter of each that you unlock throughout the progression, and the ones you wanna be going through and doing. So chapter one is gonna unlock the SP dungeon. So as soon as you unlock that, you're gonna to wanna to go to it, um, if we can get into it. You can also go through it, do it through the battle symbol on the right hand side there. Um, and basically what you're gonna have is you're gonna have these orbs, which are very rare. They, they take a long time to get together. Um, and they're gonna apply it to this top one, which is gonna be your pendants, which are used for evolution. Next one, these are used for these middle ones, but these middle ones you can also use stamina on, so don't stress too much. The keys are gonna be used for the gold dungeon. Basically the gold dungeon, do it when it's there, get it done. When you first unlock this though, you're gonna to wanna to come to this one, and as you can see, there's three versions. Basically, all of them have a chance to drop the pendants and then they drop either potions, gold, or books. Because potions and, and books you can farm with stamina, I like to do gold in these ones. However, when you first unlock it, go through and do level one of each of them because level one is gonna give you a guaranteed R pendant, level two is gonna give you a guaranteed SR pendant, level three is gonna give you a guaranteed SSR pendant. So the basic goal overall is to do level one, two, and three of all of them and then farm level three of gold eventually. So you're gonna to wanna to do that. And when you first unlock it, you'll probably only be able to do level one. So go through, do level one of each of them, get that free R pendant and then go away because they take forever to recharge. You won't cap them in a day. And then basically come back when you've got a bit more power and do level two of each of them. And then hopefully come back later when you've got enough power and do level three of each of them and then farm gold. That's the way I look at those ones. Um, these ones down here, not until sort of chapter five is when you're gonna come in here and start really farming some of these potions. Maybe chapter four, you might do a bit. And then the books are just used for evolving your hero. So as you get to the stages where you've got the pendants, and you've got the levels and all you need is books, go farm the books. Just the, the basic aim here is you don't wanna farm these things unless you have to, because you're gonna be farming a low level of them and it's not gonna be as efficient. It's pretty much the gist of that. In chapter four, you're gonna unlock PVP, which you can get to all these things from over here. So basically you unlock PVP, what you're gonna to wanna to do is just basically go to it, don't let your swords cap, and just basically always do your PVP fights. If you lose, you lose. Basically, you just want to start building a rank up. Um, just use your campaign heroes. Don't start building heroes specifically while you're trying to progress through campaign. Just, just, just basically use your swords. Don't cap them like I have where I've got 12 of five. Just keep doing it because at the end of the week, you can get diamonds. So it's just, it's just important to do it, get your points. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Early game, PVP is a very big focus late game, but early game, just, just do your swords. In chapter five, you'll actually go through a event stage where you go through with Bon and you're basically gonna fight a big red demon. Now, once you do that, you'll be able to unlock that red demon fight as you go. And the way you're gonna unlock that after that event is go to these boss battles and you can basically just repeat any of these boss battles. Eventually this uh, percentage will go up to 100 and then you're gonna spawn a demon in a town which you can then go and defeat. Now, you're probably not gonna wanna farm that at this stage, but the reason you're gonna wanna um, take note of that is because you will get a um, daily quest once you are able to do it which is going to be this one down here with Gotha and this that's going to give you three of these I mean sorry six of these three star blue upgrade stones for gear and that's going to be very important uh, we'll talk about those a little bit later on when we start looking at gear but definitely once you unlock the ability to fight those red demons do one a day at least just to be able to get this daily quest cleared now we're going to talk a little bit about gear and the kind of sets you want to build so with the gear it's gonna be, um, what you really wanna do is focus, this is what I did anyway, 
if, if you think I'm wrong, let me know. But I focused it on the right three pieces of gear. Basically, the main stat on this piece of gear is 127. As you can see, it's attack. This one is 212 with attack as well. This one's upgraded a little bit more, but you can see it's 127 versus 212. These ones have a lower main stat, which means if you keep if you upgrade the common pieces gear over here, you're not losing as out on as much main stats as you are over here. Um, and basically, as you can see, you've got... I'm not even going to try and show that because it's in Japanese still, but HP, there you go, 9.1%. We can go reroll and you can get these. You can choose one, you can reroll it for gold. Uh, when you get into like SSR gear, it's going to cost you diamonds, which you don't want to do. Um, and on this common gear, that's another thing. You've got the hammers and anvils. Never use them on common gear because you can use gold to do everything. Um, and you don't really need to worry about using a hammer. Hammer basically upgrades the percentage that it gives. You can just reroll and reroll and reroll because it's so cheap later on so save if you get any hammers or anvils here save them but that's basically what you're going to want to do build up a bit basic set of um, attack common pieces on the right um, i did the attack one on the left as well just to get that extra attack percent on my main main damage dealer and then basically you can swap that set between any heroes that you want but basically when we look at um, this type of gear if i can find one piece that just can be upgraded here we go uh bon, here we go so when you go to upgrade them like limit break them it's going to cost these little things now the great thing about it and this is why i said you want to do the um the daily red demon is because you're going to get six level three versions of those and what you can do is you can come over here click this symbol on the left hand side um, it's going to take you to king or you can just walk over to king and click it and you can actually dismantle those level um, level twos and threes and get them down to level ones now it is inefficient dismantling a level three to a level two is only going to give you two level twos however it's going to cost you six level twos to make a level three so you don't want to go willy-nilly downgrading upgrading downgrading upgrading but in these early stages when you're going to get much more value out of that common gear it's worth downgrading a few pieces of gear to get some level one uh, blue fragments so that you can keep limit breaking those common pieces and upgrading them so that's just like that other little thing that you do want to do there um, just to really maximize your gear and by the time you get to chapter six you may you probably only have one maybe two decently upgraded sets of gear and that's going to be about it just due to the fact that you don't get too many of those blue stones in the first couple of days but that is going to be it for the gear that's it for i think that's covered everything that's covered the upgrade order that's covered the um the towns the features you unlock and the gear in it in a little bit we'll do a deeper gear guide when it comes out in english because no one likes looking at japanese writing so that is going to be it for this one guys thanks for watching hope you have an awesome day and i'll look forward to seeing you in the next one cheers